Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Kaya Plus. My name is Chupan and together with me is Chun Beng. So I think in this video, we are actually continuing our topic and discussion on inflation. So um, when inflation kicks in, uh, another factor or topic that also tags along would be the increase of interest rates. So uh, I think most of us also understand that what the basic uh, mechanism kicks in when interest rate increases. Uh, but I think today we will touch more upon uh, the other aspects of it. Uh, we personally might also have other uh, you know, investments uh, and also other uh, commitments to also service during this period of time. And we will take a deeper look on the correlation of these assets or commitments uh, together with the impact of interest rates, right? So we'll take a deeper look. Of course, what we might be sharing with you uh, is considered just a personal opinion. Uh, we are not actually uh, financial advisors and experts. Do your due diligence uh, before you actually uh, do any other uh, decisions regarding your financial planning or even your personal finances. So I think the first correlation that we want to talk about would be the correlation between interest rates and also inflation. So what would actually happen uh, even uh, during this time when interest rate increases would be uh, actually the straightforward uh, scenario that we will see that commitments of our loans, our mortgages, be our car loan or even our house mortgage will increase. So when we take uh, a similar or same uh, wage back home and when interest rate go up, we have to actually apportion out uh, more money to actually service our loans. And if that scenario actually occurs or if it already actually occurs right now, uh, the end scenario would be that we will have lesser remaining cash on hand. Right? Previously, you will need to just service your uh, mortgage of 2000 ringgit or dollar a month. Now that the interest rate has gone up, you can you need to actually fork out additional 200 ringgit or $200 to resurface your loan uh, at the higher interest rates. So you have lesser remaining cash on hand every month moving forward. And that means that you also have lesser cash to spend. And the end results in a very simplified manner is that you will have lesser buying demand, not only just you, but to the mass market out there, uh, everyone will actually have lesser cash on hand to buy stuff that they uh, would want to buy and hence creating a lesser buying demand. So the easiest correlation is that when interest rate goes up, it is actually to uh, reduce or to suppress inflation, which is to uh, slow down buying demand in the market. Right. This is a very simple correlation between that. So the next one would be to look into what interest rates can affect or will affect to bond prices. So bond price are actually or bonds are actually a subcategory of investment assets where uh, people will actually uh, borrow their money out uh, in an agreement to either like corporates or even government uh, bonds to actually get a fixed return in the future. So in an event where interest rate goes up, Right, so bond prices uh, will actually get affected, and we will look at it into why. So you must need to understand that bond interest rates are generally fixed. So say, for example, today you enter into an agreement or to buy a bond at a certain uh, interest rate return, uh, the interest rate will remain the same until the maturation of the bond. So if there is an interest rate increase you actually or someone actually holding the bonds can actually choose to sell the bond away and put the money or the capital into something else that generate a higher increase, uh, gener generate in a higher re return in terms of interest rates. So they have actually the choice to uh, recycle their capital into something that yields more in terms of interest. So if that were to happen, the bonds that actually have a lower interest rate will actually uh, be sold off so there will be also lesser buying demand to these bonds and hence it would also trigger uh, a bond price drop, right? So these are the so-called basic correlation between an interest rate and bond prices. Usually increased interest rates will also trigger governments and also corporates to issue new bonds at the sharper and higher interest rates to stimulate and to attract um bond buyers to buy their bonds. But the older bonds, the ones that are low interest rates will actually be sold off and there will be lesser um, interest and buying demand to them, right? So this is just a simple correlation and uh, it does not always uh, play out as the same because there are also other factors that comes into play into determining a uh, bond price, right? The next one 
we'll be talking about will be the share market. So what would be the uh, scenario when interest rates goes up and how does it affect the share market? Too? Yeah, so when we talk about share markets, uh, I think there, there's a couple of ways to look into it uh, from a company growth perspective. So I think the first one is, uh, of course, the interest rate go up, the cost of financing go up. Technically, it will impact the company growth. And of course, if the share market, the, the investor don't have confidence on the future growth of the company, it will lead to selling of the share. So that's why it will contribute to the share price uh, uh, decrease, right? So this is from a company perspective. And then of course, from a consumer uh, perspective, uh, your living costs increase, and then you basically having uh, decided to spend less. And in this case, it will be lesser profit for certain companies. So let's say if you plan to change your phone every single year, but during time like this, maybe you change it every two years, for example. And of course, when the profit is supposed to be dropped, uh, in this case for the company, it will contribute to the decrease of the share price as well because the investor don't have confidence in it. And then the third one is uh, from a valuation standpoint, because your interest rate uh, increase, technically it has direct correlation into the discount rate under the discounted cash flow formulas. So in this case, uh, if the rate increase, it will actually uh, make the valuation drop. And again, this is a negative impact uh, towards the share price of the company. And the last one is uh, from a liquidity standpoint, interest rate increase, it will contribute to lesser cash in the whole markets. So in this case, uh, you have some sort of relationship, go back to the how much fund can be contributed into the markets. And if, if the fund become lesser, of course, it will impact the share market in general. So this is basically uh, from a theory standpoint, how interest rate will impact the share market. But of course, if you zoom into individual sector or individual uh, company, uh, it might be different. Some of the company is sort of uh, resilient proof. Uh, you need to buy them uh, regardless, even though they increase the price, you think the, the demand won't actually decrease. For example, things like your daily products, your 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 foods and, and so on. But some of the other things like tech stock, all those things, maybe it will be impacted most uh, heavily because company won't spend more into uh, tech products during a hard period. They will tend to remain with whatever tools they already have. That's why uh, it will actually impact their share price badly. So it really depends. But from a general standpoint, if an increase of the interest rate should lead to a drop in terms of share price uh, for some of the companies, right? So this is from a stock uh, or share market perspective. But then if you go into the other category, uh, how about properties markets, uh, buying fixed asset, the, the properties, uh, technically from a very uh, layman standpoint, you think, of course, uh, the cost of mortgage increase, then uh, people can't really afford, uh, and then it will actually go to lesser demand. And of course, it's a bad uh, signal to the property market. But from the other hand, uh, during inflation or hyperinflation period like this, uh, some of the investors will tend to, instead of keeping their cash, they will buy asset to preserve value. Uh, in this case, maybe property markets is one of the uh, places they will go and invest. That's why in, it might actually have a good uh, demand back to the property market again. So that's why from an interest rate uh, uh, increase standpoint, it don't really have a very direct uh, relationship with the property markets. So it really depends on the whole economic situation and what is the uh, other factor that you come in. Maybe from a, a government standpoint, they put in some policy to help to boost the property market. A lot of factors can impact this for, from an interest rate standpoint. It really depends. Don't have a very clear relationship with property markets. So I will pass it back to Japan to cover the next asset class, which is somewhat similar with uh, properties, which is gold. Yeah. So I think um, to understand the correlationship between interest rates and gold, you need to also understand uh, on what basis, on what uh, kind of scenario interest rates goes up. So uh, as you mentioned, you need to really understand uh, inflation and you also need to understand why interest rates increase. So interest rates can increase during uh, one of the secret scenarios, which is an economic growth period. Right. So during a strong economic growth period, uh, devaluation 
of your currency or inflation is actually healthy. Uh, and hence, you need to also price in your interest rates to actually suit and catch up together with your inflation. So during this kind of period of time, uh, basically, since the economy is growing, uh, people tend to actually uh, look away from gold because gold itself doesn't really generate uh, any investment or, or, or economic returns in terms of value generation. So during this kind of situation, lesser demand for gold is expected during a very good economic growth period and hence prices of or capital lock previously locked into gold will actually uh, go up from gold and go into other more exciting sectors, be it your uh, equity markets or even your uh, high yield generating kind of properties. So in this scenario, gold prices will drop during interest rate increases. But on the other flip, on the hand, during an inflationary period of time where right now right, we might be experiencing, so a uh, growth might not be so much, but inflation is really, really, really very high. And um, people are kind of afraid of a recession for these successive interest rate increases. So during this kind of scenario or period of time, uh, the school of thought can actually change, which is to buy gold during uncertainties so that you actually lock in your assets or your wealth into something that can preserve it during uncertain times like this. So if this situation were to occur, you will see that uh, capital or fund might be flowing to go to actually uh, hold it as a preservation value mechanism. And during this time of time, gold prices can actually go up. So it really depends on why the interest rate goes up and what kind of a period we are in and uh, how the school of thoughts can actually flip the gold prices uh, on both ways, either go up or either go down. So it really depends on what situations we are in right now. So I think next we will actually touch on the correlationship of interest rates and currency. So uh, this is also an interesting one. So under such circumstances during interest rates increases, currency technically should actually go up stronger, right? So under this situation, not only individuals, but also corporates will need to pay up more interest when we borrow money. So what happens during these kind of situations when we pay up more interest, we will actually uh, see uh, ourselves paying more upfront and we also need to pay back more when we return the money. So under such circumstances, if a relative country's interest rate were to go up, but the interest rates of other countries were to remain, uh, you end up paying up more interest after you borrow the money and you pay it back. Uh, subconsciously, we we'll also push up the valuation of the currency uh, because of the interest rate increases. So the currency value would also increase if a currency uh, of a particular country goes up in terms of interest rates, but the interest rates in other countries remain the same. So, but you can see that in the current scenario, Whenever interest rates of the U.S. goes up, you can see that currencies from other countries tend to also adjust upwards as well. There are, uh, you know, odd cases where, in this ex example, the European Union, uh, they choose to actually uh, not raise their interest rates that aggressively, and hence you see a parity between the USD and the Euro uh, at the exchange of just one to one uh, for nearly twenty years, uh, and this can be the uh, situation that can actually play into the example that we have uh, actually explained here today. So uh, usually it tends to follow suit, but if the euro does not increase their, the European Union does not increase their euro uh, borrowing rates, hence you see the parity reached between USD and the euro. So the next one I think will be an interesting one, which is to gauge the correlationship between interest rates and cryptocurrency. So Chun Bing, uh, what would happen and are we actually seeing the true uh, reaction of an increased interest rates together with cryptocurrencies? I think when uh, during period like this, uh, you can see there's a huge drop, not, in, not only in uh, the share markets, but also in the cryptocurrency markets. I think from a very high level standpoint, uh, when the interest rate goes up, uh, it actually represents lesser hot money in, in the market, meaning from a layman, uh, during bad economic time, you tend to keep the cash to buy something else more tangible. Uh, you buy properties, you buy gold, or even keep the cash. So, so when you have all these things take back uh, uh, into your own pockets, 
the whole market will have lesser hot money to go into so-called high-risk investment. So a lot of people, they might know cryptocurrency, they might just follow the trend. When you talk about follow the trend, they are somewhat like a gambling kind, kind of uh, 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 thinking. So, so when you have excessive cash, then you tend to go for high risk because it will actually come out with high return. And you don't need to worry because you think you can make the money back soon. But if the whole thing reverse, uh, then you will pull out from the high risk uh, investment. In this case, cryptocurrency will get hit very, very badly. That's why you can see uh, during the event of uh, in increase of interest rate, uh, the crypto price will actually crash and it's actually happening across all different different cryptocurrency from BTC to all the others uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, right? So this basically sum up some of the things that we wanted to share with you uh, from a relationship standpoint. What does it mean uh, when an increase of interest rate or decrease of interest rate, what is the relationship between them with the other asset class, right? So maybe I pass to Jupan to do a closing on, on giving out a summary about this. Yeah, so you can see that uh, when interest rate goes up, it tends to uh, impact a lot of things, the way we live. Um, but it also comes with good measures, which is to also curb inflation because if inflation is um, being uh, left to run out of hand, as history showed, uh, this kind of scenarios will lead to another Great Depression. And this is what um, the government uh, around the world do not want. And also personally, as a uh, small consumer out there i do not want to actually experience a great depression so look at it from a, a two sides of coin interest rates is there to actually help to curb inflation and to maintain a healthy growing economy without letting everything spiraling out of control that said uh, when interest rate goes up it does affect a multitude of things uh, it also affects bond prices that we talk about the property market gold prices currencies crypto and also the equities market so it can be a little bit uh, complicated if you are actually new and you might be a little bit lost on how to position yourself into such situations where interest rate goes up uh, you find yourself with lesser spending power and you actually want to find a solution going forward to help preserve or even grow wealth so uh, the good thing is that we are currently doing it to uh, members of our premium club uh, services we actually do have a simplified uh, premium club Bundled services where we look into equities, we look into uh, REITs as well to actually uh, analyze them. You only need to actually uh, receive what we have actually analyzed and then go through it and whether these kind of uh, companies or REITs suit your appetite in terms of preserving and growing your wealth, right? But then again, we are not financial professionals. We are actually just doing it out of due diligence and out of uh, personal uh, gestures to help the entire uh, community invest better to grow and preserve their wealth. So you can check it out. We have inserted the link of uh, the invitation to our caption to so see you in Premium Club if you are in interested to actually grow and uh, invest your wealth and also invest in yourself. So anything to end off uh, today's video, Chumbing, before we call it for an end? So if you guys like the video, uh, remember to give us a thumbs up and also uh, share it out to the social media. And of course, if you like the video, remember to subscribe uh, to our channels uh, so that you don't miss uh, when there's any update uh, in yep. our channels. So I think that's all for now. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.